tell me exactly what happened. I think I killed my What What do you mean by that? What happened? I had a dream. And then I turn on the lights and she's dead on the floor. How? 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 I'm blo- I'm, I have blood all over me and there's a bloody knife on the bed. And I think I did it. In the early morning of September 1, 2017, one of the most sinister 911 calls in history took place. An expectant man called saying he had a horrible nightmare. It was a nightmare filled with rage, blood, and gore. A nightmare in which he killed his wife. He was so disgusted that he woke up with a jolt and touched the sheets to look for his wife. In the dark, but out of the dreams the nightmare became real, Since he could not find her, he turned on the lights and found his wife's lifeless body in the middle of a pool of blood. Did he kill her in her sleep? Did someone else kill her? He didn't know. Lauren Ashley Nicole Hugelmeyer was born on June 9, 1988 in Los Angeles, California, being one of the three daughters of the marriage of Lori and Dale. However, she was raised in Kentucky. Even though we have quite little information about her, We know that she was always a kind, confident, and extremely sweet woman. She loved animals, children, and she was also a very good student. Her family was Lutheran, and she was brought up in a very religious and traditional environment. She always had a lot of friends, but without a doubt the best of them all was her older sister, Beth, to whom she always confided all her secrets. After her twenties she met a boy named Matthew James Feltz, who changed her life forever. Matthew Phelps had a significantly contrasting childhood compared to Lauren. It appeared that his parents were entirely absent. After he was born, his father became disengaged, and his mother seemed incapable of fulfilling her parental duties. Consequently, she gave her child to her own parents while she pursued her own path. There were a few occasions where she contemplated embracing motherhood, but she never fully committed until Matt turned the age of 13. His mother married several times, yet none of these marriages fulfilled the role of a father figure for young Matt. There was one who came close, but not in the most appropriate manner. It is rumored that this man, whose name remains unknown, allowed Matt to watch horror movies late into the night and exposed him to unsuitable content for a child. Amidst this instability, Matt found himself lost, and as he entered his teenage years, he started hanging out with the wrong people. He started drinking, taking drugs, and even started consuming cough syrup. The excessive amounts of this syrup can make a person high. His heavy drinking, syrup usage, truancy, and neglecting assignments became a routine. Concerned that they were on the verge of losing him, his grandparents made the decision to enroll him in a charter school. Specifically, they sent him to Clear Creek Baptist Bible College, a secluded institution far away from the outside world. They firmly believed that the change of the environment would help Matt to change. And indeed, that's precisely what occurred. He became interested in religion, Bible, and ultimately decided to pursue a future as a pastor. On the other hand, Lauren grew up in a completely different and healthy environment surrounded by supportive friends. Matt and Lauren were never truly close friends. They merely knew each other from school, recognizing each other's faces and sharing mutual friends. They never had direct contact or a deep connection. Eventually, when Matt switched schools, Lauren also transferred due to her family relocating to North Carolina. In 2007, she graduated with excellent grades from high school and subsequently pursued a degree in business administration and management at Appalachian State University. From this point forward, Lauren's life was marked by remarkable achievements. Lauren, a deeply devoted girl, attended the church every week. In the church community, she held a significant role as the leader of the youth group and occasionally took care of the younger children. Additionally, she had a stable job related to her field of study. Her life seemed to be on a positive trajectory, surrounded by friends, having a job, and accumulating savings. 
However, deep within her heart, she longed for someone special with whom she could build a future a partner, with whom she could find independence, get married, and eventually have children. In 2014, she was given that opportunity. Lauren was very present on social media, particularly Instagram. She used to post photos regularly, showcasing scenes of hiking, visiting churches and coffee shops with friends. Her activity on the platform was quite frequent. One day, she received an unexpected surprise through direct messages on her profile. Do you remember Matthew Phelps? Well, it turned out that he had stumbled upon her profile while browsing the network. One profile led him to another, and one suggestion led to another until he eventually found Lauren. He decided to inquire about her life, asking how things were going, if she had a job, and if she had a partner. Afterward, he began liking all her photos. They started exchanging messages almost every day, progressing from Instagram to WhatsApp, and then to phone calls. Coincidentally, the two of them shared many common interests. They were both fans of Star Wars, Harry Potter, comic books, and science fiction. Moreover, they were both deeply religious. They both aspired to marry, start a family, attend college together, and uphold their religious values. In Lauren's mind, Matt had seemed like the perfect match. After a few months of dating, Matt reached a point where he couldn't handle the distance anymore. As a result, he packed up his things and relocated to North Carolina. It was from there that strange things began to happen. Lauren's family was very close, filled with deep love and regular gatherings. They warmly embraced Matt upon his arrival, treating him as one of their own. Lori, the girl's mother, accepted Matt as the son she never had. However, Dale, Lauren's father, had doubts about him. Lauren was his favorite daughter, and he thought that no man was good enough for her, but he gave Matt an opportunity. Initially, Dale was kind and respectful towards Matt, but one afternoon, everything took a turn for the worse. The entire family had gathered to enjoy an afternoon of games, and suddenly, someone suggested playing the electronic game of 20 questions, and that's when things went bad. Everything was going well until someone asked Matt if he had ever been married before, to which he shortly responded with a simple yes. He firmly declined to delve further into the matter and passed the question. Dale's mind began to race, considering all the possible reasons why Matt would avoid discussing his past relationship. Perhaps he had been unfaithful or even abusive towards his former spouse. In Dale's eyes, anything seemed plausible. He hoped that Lauren wouldn't end up encountering the same fate as Matt's ex-partner. In November 2015, Lauren and Matthew made their engagement announcement. A grand ceremony followed, with numerous guests in attendance, including the groom's mother an individual who was generally disliked. Apparently, she was impertinent. Even if she didn't say it out loud, she seemed to be against this marriage. Some attributed it to a bad day or a rough start, but later they realized that this was not the case. On November 11, 2016, the wedding took place with a mixed theme. Everything appeared ordinary, except for a few elements inspired by the Star Wars saga. Lightsabers and even spaceships were incorporated into the celebration. Strangely enough, everything fit perfectly, except for one thing, the attire of the groom's mother. Against all social conventions, the woman chose to wear white on this significant day, a choice that many thought was disrespectful. The bride's family was outraged by this disregard, but Lauren herself seemed unfazed. She carried on with the day, enjoying herself by dancing, indulging in the wedding cake, and having a good time. Once the celebration came to an end, it appeared that Lauren was extremely happy with Matt. Their Instagram accounts showcased them posting pictures together, always beaming with joy, seemingly cherishing their shared moments. They attended church together and had a circle of mutual friends. However, behind closed doors, their once peaceful relationship began to crumble. After their wedding, Lauren managed to save around $10,000, 
but she had earmarked that money for emergencies and bills rather than shared expenses. Unfortunately, as time passed, all of that money dissipated, and the main reason behind it was Matt. Matt lacked the ability to save, and that drove Lauren crazy. Her frustration escalated when she once caught Matt stealing money from her purse. Realizing their financial difficulties, Lauren turned to her parents for advice. They got together, made monthly plans and shopping budgets. Although Matt appeared to understand the situation, Lauren didn't trust him. Another thing that bothered Lauren was the fact that she was working three jobs, while Matt did nothing. She worked diligently as a full-time auditor, provided babysitting services for children who went to church, and even sold candles through a multi-level marketing company. In addition, she created YouTube videos discussing the company and promoting the candles, which garnered a decent response. Lauren shared everything on social media, and the little time she had, she tried to spend with her husband. Matthew did work, and none of the available job opportunities seemed interesting to him. Even when he managed to get a job, he was unable to keep it. However, in 2017, he managed to secure a job, taking care of lawns in a gardening company, and it appeared that Matt liked it. Unfortunately, the job only provided part-time hours and small pay, which left Lauren frustrated. She couldn't understand how this man who supposedly had aspirations was doing nothing with his life. Prior to this, Matt had told her that his ultimate ambition was to become a church pastor, but she saw no real dedication or action towards pursuing that goal. Driven by her desire for a better future, Lauren pushed Matt to return to school, and he supposedly made an effort to do so. However, the most significant problem in their relationship emerged when Matt's alleged tendencies of extreme jealousy and control became apparent. In the church they attended, there was a young man with whom Lauren got along very well. They talked about everything, met up for drinks, and were always joking. However, Matt didn't find their friendship amusing at all. He would frequently become jealous, accusing Lauren of infidelity. Eventually, he told her the reason behind his behavior apparently. All three of his ex-girlfriends had cheated on him, with his ex-wife being the worst offender. Matt and his ex-wife had a seemingly blissful relationship. After dating for 10 months, they got married. They were very in love and happy together. Interestingly, just like Lauren, his ex-wife actively participated in their church, attending services and engaging in various activities. Unfortunately, during one of these church-related events, she crossed paths with a man with whom she eventually cheated on Matt. While Matt imposed strict limitations on Lauren's interactions with other men, he himself felt free to engage with whomever he pleased. He would like other women's posts on Instagram, exchange messages with them, and frequently spend time with their neighbors, particularly a woman named Valerie who resided next door. They frequently spent time together, engaging in their own pranks and enjoying dinners together. However, on the night of August 31, 2017, Matt disregarded his plans with Lauren and chose to depart with Valerie instead. This incident unfolded while Lauren was busy cooking and talking to her sister, Beth, over the phone. Beth bore witness to the entire situation. As Lauren prepared their meal, Matt casually passed by and mentioned that he would join her later. This carefree comment didn't please Lauren at all, causing her to yell at him. She demanded to know where he was going and with whom. Matt told her that he was going out with Valerie. Then, without even looking her in the face, Matt walked out of the door. Minutes ticked by as Lauren completed her cooking. She set the table, arranged the dishes, then picked up her phone to ask Matt when he'll be back. He casually replied that he was thoroughly enjoying himself and would probably be late. Feeling overwhelmed, Lauren turned to her sister, expressing her frustration. She couldn't bear to be with Matt any longer and expressed her desire for a divorce. Beth, offering unwavering support, reassured Lauren that they would find a solution the next day. The events that unfolded when Matt returned home remain unknown whether they argued or if they worked it out, no one knows. But, eventually, the couple went to sleep. 
Meanwhile, Matt, unable to sleep, turned to Coruscidon Syrup, as he had done on previous occasions. In his mind, this time would be no different. After taking several sips, he placed the Syrup on the bedside table, switched off the light, and closed his eyes. A few minutes later, he fell asleep completely, and supposedly had good dreams. However, a nightmare lurked. In this nightmare, he grabbed a knife and tragically killed his wife. It was so real and bloody that the man woke up scared. He was sweating, very nervous, and very anxious. In the darkness, his hands frantically searched the sheets for Lauren's presence, but to his dismay, she was nowhere to be found. Filled with a sense of dread, he switched on the light and quickly got up the bed. What awaited him was a horrifying scene. Lauren was laying lifeless on the floor, surrounded by a pool of blood. A bloody knife laid atop the bed, leaving Matt with a chilling realization it appeared that he had killed his wife. Filled with panic, he swiftly grabbed the phone and dialed 911, desperately seeking assistance in the face of this harrowing tragedy. Tell me exactly what happened. I think I killed my What What do you mean by that? What happened? I had a dream. And then I turned on the lights and she's dead on the floor. How? 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 I'm blo I'm, I have blood all over me and there's a bloody knife on the bed. And I think I did it. Okay. Give me her right, stay on the phone with me. I'm getting her ambulance, okay? I can't believe this. I can't believe this. When did when did you wake up to find this? I don't, I don't even know what time it is. All right, stay on the phone with me, sir. I'm just gonna ask you a few questions, okay? I'm getting some help to you. Are you with Are you with the patient now? Yeah, I can see you. Okay. All right. How old is the How old is the patient? How's your? She's twenty nine. Okay. Is she Is she awake at all right now? What makes you think she's dead? Is she awake? She got breathed. Okay. Oh my God. Okay, do you think she is beyond, beyond any help? I don't know. I don't, I'm too scared to get too close to her. Okay, just stay on the phone with me, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. I'm so scared. All right, I've already sent the paramedics to help you, okay? I'm sending someone to assist you. Just please leave everything as you found it. Is there anything else we can do for you, sir? Where's, where's the knife right now? I saw the bed. I'm not next to it, so I'm not. I don't have a weapon on me or anything like that. Okay. When did when did you wake up? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I took I took more medicine than I should have. What medicine did you take? I took, I took coarse eating, cough and cold, coarse eating, HPT, cough and cold, because I know it can make you feel good, so a lot of times I can't sleep at night. Upon receiving the distress call, multiple agents immediately arrived in the house and found a rather peculiar scene. Contrary to his initial demeanor on the phone, Matt appeared surprisingly calm speaking coherently and exhibiting no signs of substance influence. Furthermore, he was not covered in blood, his clothes were all clean. On the other hand, the victim's body was injured, full of stab wounds, drenched in blood, and unrecognizable. Strangely, there was blood around the body, while the rest of the room remained remarkably clean. Adding to the unsettling nature of the scene, the whole scene looked very staged, with a knife placed meticulously on the bed and medications neatly arranged on the nightstand. Amidst the chaos, 
The paramedics realized Lauren was still alive. They immediately rushed her to the emergency room. Tragically, despite their efforts, she succumbed to her injuries within a few hours. Contradicting Matthew's account, the autopsy unveiled a shocking tally of 123 stab wounds inflicted upon Lauren Hugelmeyer, painting a disturbing picture of the crime scene. After that, the police conducted a series of tests as part of their investigation. Firstly, they used a luminal test to detect blood stains throughout the couple's house. The results were shocking. A massacre had taken place there. Blood traces were found extensively in the bathroom, all over the room, on the walls, furniture, and hallways. It became evident that Matt's claim of a nightmare was a fabrication. He had committed the heinous act of killing his wife, cleaned up the crime scene, took a shower, and then called 911. Further tests were conducted, including a toxicology test, which showed that Matt had consumed a small amount of cough syrup, but not to a degree that could explain his actions. The police thoroughly searched the entire house, seizing items of interest such as Matt's diary, computers, and cell phones. After the examination of these items, significant evidence was found that shed light on Matt's state of mind and potential motivations. First, his diary revealed his deep jealousy and resentment towards Lauren's loving and close-knit family, as he had none of that. Matt admitted that deep down he hated Lauren, because she had everything he would never have. The examination of Matt's computer and cell phone revealed the couple's problems. They frequently argued about money, jealousy, and work-related issues. In their final exchange, Lauren threatened him with divorce, potentially providing a motive for the crime. As the police delved deeper, they found out that Matt had two Instagram profiles. One profile was public, showcasing seemingly normal photos of him and Lauren during church outings. However, the second profile, under the name Marty underscore Radical, remained private and hidden from public view. This hidden profile revealed Matt's obsession with the movie American Psycho. This film revolves around a seemingly perfect man who, behind closed doors, is a manipulative and calculating serial killer. The profile featured peculiar photographs related to the movie, including images of blood, monsters, demons, and sinister phrases. Most disturbingly, there was a picture of Matt himself dressed as the protagonist from American Psycho. The trial of Matthew James Phelps for the murder of Lauren Hugelmeyer began in October 2018, and a large number of people came forward. Firstly, several friends of Matt came forward, revealing disturbing conversations where he expressed his desire to kill, stab, strangle, and watch someone die. Additionally, the neighbor, with whom Matt shared a friendly relationship, clarified that they were never involved romantically. However, she disclosed an unsettling incident where Matt expressed his fascination with stealing one of her guns to commit a murder. Furthermore, Matt's ex-wife played a significant role in the trial. She attested that she had never been unfaithful to him, but their relationship deteriorated due to his financial irresponsibility, inability to keep a job, extravagant spending habits, and his involvement with other women. The ex-wife also shared a distressing incident where Matt resorted to physical violence by hitting and pushing her, prompting her decision to file for divorce and distance herself from him. These testimonies explained Matt's disturbing mindset, providing critical insights into his behavior and potential motives for the crime. In the face of all the evidence, the defense resorted to a few key arguments. Firstly, they maintained that the cough syrup played a significant role and should be held responsible for Matt's actions, asserting that it had affected his mental state. Secondly, the defense stated that Matt was incapable of causing harm to anyone, rejecting the Instagram profile as evidence against him. But that was a failed attempt, since the judge had a lot of evidence linking Matthew directly to the crime. During the trial, no friend or any member of his family showed up. Eventually, he pleaded guilty and on October 5, 2018, Matt was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. During the sentencing, he made an apology to Lauren's family and friends, 
to which her family responded that it didn't mean anything to them. They also stated that they will never be able to forgive him. Lauren Hujelmeyer was a smart, caring, loving, and a hard-working young woman who had her life ahead of her. Unfortunately, she crossed paths with the wrong person who took her life in the most horrific way possible. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to follow for more crime stories.